Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are around the world. It is beautiful to see so many of you um, waiting for me as I went live then. How are we? I hope you're all super, super well. I'm still absolutely buzzing <laughs> off the back of um, last weekend. I have been, oh, I'm hearing myself back. I'm hearing myself back. And that was really quite weird. I was. <laughs> can somebody just let me know in the chat that you can hear me okay, please? Thank you. Okay, right. So that was really odd. I could hear myself then. I was a bit, I was getting a little bit confused. And um, for those of you that follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you will know that since Soul School, I have been on a fast. And I have been um, completely, completely immersed in, thanks, Martin, much appreciated. I have been completely immersed in the energies that were created last week at Soul School, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And we've got some huge news coming to you um, shortly regarding uh, the way that Soul School is actually going to look uh, going forward. Next Tuesday is going to be a massive, massive um call that we're going to be doing to basically bring everybody up to speed um, in regards to what is going on for the future. It is going to look very different. Uh, Soul School was incredible first time around, please don't get me wrong, but it is going to be even more special um, as we step forward and into the new version. I'm not going to call it um, Soul School 2 because it's not going to be Soul School 2. It's definitely still Soul School. It's just, um, you know, Things are transforming at such a huge rate right now. So we are embodying that. So first and foremost, to any of my American followers, I hope you're all safe and well. Um, I believe the weather's been a little bit spicy over there in certain parts. So just sending you guys so much of my love. And um, BT, I know I've dropped you a message uh, to check in on you. And I hope you, Carla and the family are doing okay. Um, my thoughts are always with you guys. I don't often know what's going on. When BT told me that there was some... Uh, some stuff going on over there, hurricanes and stuff. I was like, oh, really? Like, that's how uh, disassociated I am from the 3D world. So apologies for not, for not speaking about it sooner. Um, but yes, Soul School is definitely evolving and it's evolving in such a beautiful way that I feel that absolutely everybody that came last time, but also people that are, that are only just hearing about it for the first time, you're going to be really, really, really excited as to what is happening. Um, I think Mahoney's here now, so I'll just add him in. Hello, you right? Hello, darling. <laughs> good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Are you good? I am. I've got um I've got a strange couple of days, Lucy. So I've got the Marbet Film Festival on at the moment. Right. And I've been doing a couple of radio shows and stuff, and I've got some uh, premiere to attend and so it's a bit of a crazy week, guys. I'm on my way you're, back. So you're three D Mahoney today, yeah? Not right, right. now. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm out there somewhere and you've just gone boom, straight down with my energy. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, in actual fact, I'm not a big fan of it, but the thing is I, it's, I have a business connection with the film industry here. So we produced a small little cheap, low budget film early in the year and it got, we entered it into the film festival and they chose it. I was like, what? So um, that's happening Wednesday, Lucy. But I've uh, I've been having a really interesting week actually on the um on the 5D level. So um lots of activations and lots of people coming at me with like things that are making me laugh. You said a few things to me like people always have messages for you. It's true but there's been a few weird things happen. Okay, I'll share one of them. Uh having breakfast yesterday morning with four people. I have to show one of the videos of us that we do in the goofy one in the car in Gibraltar. The girl broke down into tears, was shaking, couldn't hold the phone. And she says, feel my heart. Her heart was beating out of her chest and said, that's the girl from my dream two years ago. You. She nearly, she freaked out. She thought it was a setup. So I thought that was very interesting. I haven't got to the bottom of it yet because after the dream, she wrote some notes. So she's going to let me know what's in the notes and see what mischief you were doing together with her in the astral realm. But that was super interesting. It won't, it, it won't be the astral realm. It will just be, there will be another realm that that, that was happening in. Yeah, well, so, I'm still a novice. Concurrently, 
concurrently. So that's my personal belief anyway, is that these these things are happening concurrently. So I don't know why it surprises people when I show up in their dreams. <laughs> Not anymore. It used to surprise me. I'd be like, what, what, what? Now I get it completely. Um, and I'm sure she'll connect the dots when she's ready to connect the dots. But uh, that's an interesting one. Maybe that was a message for you, Mahoney. <laughs> up your game. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, who knows? But, uh, you know, she was trying. She was so confused by it. Her whole face changed. The tears were piling out of her. I was like, what's the matter? And um, I haven't seen her for a couple of years. She doesn't live here anymore. She's only down getting some documents. And that was a strange experience. But she is um, she is um, on her way to this awakening. She's well on her way. She's got good energy. She's been doing a lot of inner work. So yeah, I've had a couple of strange other ones like that, but I'll share that one. And I've been um, watching your daily broadcasts and your fasting. I think it's amazing what you're doing, Lucy. I can't Thank imagine you. how that how that's going. Just nothing but water. No? Is that where you are right now? Just on water? No, today I've gone to juices. So um, yeah, it's been. It's no, I love it. I, I do it twice a year, every single year without fail. It brings my body into alignment, and especially after something like Soul School, where I've been doing a lot of energy shifting in other people and bringing people online and activating people. For me to take time out from digest digestion, it's like removing one of the senses. And I'm going to do much more about that in um, Soul School next time, uh, which will happen in February. But it's for me personally, it's just a discipline that I put myself through twice a year, every year without fail. A lot of people go, tell me about it. I want to do it, blah, blah, blah. But the, the thing is, is, you know, this is a massive trauma release that takes place. So, um, you know, and, and it's very in alignment with the energies that are taking place at the moment is, you know, we are putting very clear boundaries. Can you not hear me, Cliff? Can everybody else? I hear you perfectly. Yeah, you're loud and clear. OK, so it's just Cliff that's got a problem. OK, cool. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, it just basically um, knocks me into alignment and I actually take my program um, through it. So I've got a 12 month program that I run called Self Love Club membership. And basically um, they basically go through it twice a year with me. And it's an optional thing. It's not something that I force on them, but it's something that is a massive shift in trauma. It's just another you know, doing a session with me, I can help people shift trauma if they're ready for it very, very quickly. Coming to soul school, you'll shift trauma very, very quickly. You could go and see many other people around the world to help you shift trauma. But this is another um, another way of doing it. And it's a very physical, tangible thing. So, you know, my members for the first four days, they hate me because <laughs> I make them drink this really gross stuff. Um, and I've been doing it for seven years, so it doesn't taste gross to me anymore. I just get on with it and I'm like, yeah, come on. And on day two this time around, I actually had to go in the group and say, listen, you lot, enough's enough. Up your shit, get on with it, come on. And all the bitching and whinging stopped and all of the gold started flowing through. So it was absolutely priceless. Um, but then basically what I encourage them to do is go into a day's worth of water fasting, a couple of days of juices and then back onto food. And just that week will allow a lot of um, trauma to come to the surface and lots of different uh, processing taking place. So um, but I'm because I've been doing it for so many years, I'm actually on day eight today. And today I've just gone back onto juices. So essentially what that means today is my physical trauma and the way that my body is reacting and the healing that's taking place is from eight years ago. So I'm back in 2014 at the moment. And if you look at my face, I actually look like I've gone back that amount of years too, because the inflammation has gone, you know, just uh, it's absolutely incredible what happens to the body and how quickly it can heal. So, you know, just a little bit more on that is for every day you fast, um, it's basically a year of your life. So say um, 10 years ago, you had a really traumatic experience and maybe you had, to, like I've got pins in one of my hands. So maybe you had that done and actually there was a big trauma around that. If you fasted for nine days, you could get back to here and you could heal all of that trauma very, very quickly. So it's a beautiful process. It's not easy. I make it look very easy because I've been doing it for seven years. Trust me, when I first did it, it wasn't pretty and it wasn't, you know, I was a right right whinging little moaning mini um but now I embrace it every time I get to the week before it and I'm like I don't really want to do this because I love food but I know the benefits that are going to come so I'm flying at the moment I, I'm like out there in the ether somewhere and I'm not really ready to come back down so I'm going to keep going until until I am ready to come back down so it's been an intense week for me really intense yes, week and in such a good way are you still swimming every day 
I haven't been in the ocean since I've been fasting because I don't think my body would regulate. I went in for the first two days, but then like I've got nothing in my body right now. Do you get what I mean? I'm I'm very, very, very slim right now. So um, I just don't I just don't know if my body will be able to process it. So I went for a run this morning for the first time since last Tuesday. Um, which was really good. Normally, I wouldn't do that yet, but I just felt like it. I had a, I had a nice little run, um, but yeah, I feel I feel good. I feel so energized. I feel more energized than I felt in probably six months. And I've organized the whole of the next Soul School in literally a couple of days. So <laughs> I don't even know how I've managed to do that. But it's yeah, I've just got uh, there's just so much energy to be had right now. And the October energy, like the energy that we've just stepped into for the month is very powerful. If, um, you know, it's there's, there's a massive, massive shift that's taken place just over the last few days. And as we get closer to the full moon, ride the wave is all I'm going to say to people. If you've got something in your mind, ride it. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Ride it and, you know, succeed and choose everything that you want to choose because now is the time to be creating. We've got a shit show coming up for a few months. Um, obviously, if you choose that, what are you saying? I was saying, you have, you, have you got a bigger venue, bigger venue for the, the next Soul School, Lucy? It is a bigger venue, yes. Good. I think we're going to need to. I'm not going to share where it is or anything like that yet. Um, there is. What I'll do is I'll pop a link um, in the description field for this um, video. And you can go there and sign up to the registration call, which is on the 11th of October. That's where I'm going to share all of the details. Once that's been shared, obviously, I'll share it out on my social media and we can talk about it openly. But there is a reason for me. Um, I'm only going to be giving the town rather than the um, exact location for now for lots of reasons. Um, but I will share that next Tuesday. So it's not too long to wait, but we want to get people um basically on a call to explain what's going to happen because it's going to be so different not just a little bit different it's going to be so different to the one that we've had last time uh, literally everything is changing about it so i'm really 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 freaking excited about it <laughs> even david doesn't know nothing about it i haven't spoken to him about it literally there's two people there's two people that no, know about it at the moment so you're all you're all top secret i respect that that's fine um yeah. What are we talking about today, Lucy? What was the topic then? Well, we were going to speak about um, it's not a competition because I, I feel that there is, um, you know, even last week um, on our video and stuff, it was a little bit, you know, um, sometimes you go to events like Soul School or you hear somebody speak and you go, shit, I wish I was like them or I wish I could tap into my gifts or I wish I had that shift, or I wish I had that card. Do you get what I mean? In every angle, whether you're three or 5D, um, there's so many comparisons and competitions because it's been built that way. You know, we've been indoctrinated to believe we've got to compete with each other. So that's what we were going to talk about today. What's your that's initial funny. thoughts? Yeah, no, great. Um, you see, because I've got both, I've got one foot in the geopolitical and the other one in the for the audience i see it a lot you know the truth of community yeah, very dancing and backstabbing but i we can barely hear you david yeah we can barely hear you i said when i was growing up, when i was growing up i had uh, siblings in my house and i wasn't competitive so I've never been into sports. I don't like watch sports on television. I'm not competitive at all. But I, you're going with it, Lucy, because sometimes I hear myself saying, I wish I knew that. I wish I could do that. Or that would be great if I could do that. But to accept the level that you're at at that moment, again, it's all about enjoying the journey because you can get very advanced or you want to get very advanced and you'll miss out on the other stuff. So it's a, it's a very interesting topic that, and I see it in all aspects of this um of the world i'm involved with it's interesting yeah and it's you know it's it's exactly um i mean we're all exactly where we we're needed to be right if if we were supposed to be anywhere else we would be somewhere else we're all learning we're all remembering we're all being slammed with our traumas at the moment every decision that we make is is normally our trauma at the moment you know and this is it's very very interesting which is why you've got to stop yourself catch yourself and process before you you're making um these decisions you know it's extremely important that we recognize this 
So it's not just in the sense of, you know, sports and stuff. That's a very, very, very easy and obvious one. You know, like I was very competitive in sport. I was very, very good at sport. Um, so, you know, I, I played netball for England, for example, and things like that. So I was very competitive at sport and very good at it. Um, but as I've got older, it you know, it's not sport. I mean, I say that I used to I, literally a few years ago, I was fighting professional Muay Thai. So, of course, I've still got that competitive edge within me. However, it doesn't it doesn't fire me up like it used to. What fires me up now is is figuring out the balance and actually living in the present moment, which is bloody difficult to do. You know, it's really, really challenging to do. And that's kind of where I am now is just essentially like competing with myself to come back into the present moment. And when people are trying to book me to do things in 2023, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, you know, I don't even know where I'm going to be at, at that point. You know, so it's it's a bit of a an interesting one because we have to live, don't we? We actually have to, we have to live in this 3D, 3D world right now. But let's look at from a spiritual perspective or from a gift perspective, because I truly believe that everybody's gifts are coming back online now. I truly believe that there is a mass awakening taking place. And as we step into 2023, around March time, I'm seeing another huge wave of awakening taking place, which means some of the sleepy people or what we call the sleepers today, come March 2023, they are going to be in a position whereby they are stepping up a little bit more and they are starting to recognize that maybe they've got certain things that they can do which they didn't know before. And, and you know, we do have these waves that happen with um, spirituality. And, you know, like I, I was awoken in around uh, 2012, 2013, and I was in that wave. There are many people that went before me um, and there will be many people that go after me. Now, that doesn't mean I'm better or I'm less. It just means I am where I am. You know, and I'm brave enough to speak out about it. That's the thing. I'm, I'm brave enough to speak out about it. A lot of people, when I first started going live on Facebook and things like that, it's, um, you know, like I was just brave enough to take the bullshit. It's as simple as that. People thought I was crazy. However, now it's becoming much more normal. Um, you know, you, you can sit around a dinner table and talk about astral traveling these days. I had a great example on Saturday. I wasn't eating, obviously, because I was fasting. But these people were pick, picking my brains on astral travel and stuff. And I'm like, when the heck would you ever go out and have people picking your brains on astral travel that you've never met before? It's, it's just freaking amazing. So this is taking place. But I guess the point, the point of what we wanted to speak about today was about being patient with it. Yeah, it's something I struggle with, but I've recently really come online and just to enjoy the moments that I've got now because, you know, as you move through the, the gates, the gateways and the knowledge increases, you understand what you knew before. And as you get a grips on that, you get a little bit more of an upload or a, an upbeat. Then you, you get to understand what you knew before even deeper and deeper. And I think it's such an amazing feeling getting into the deep especially the emotional consciousness and then the only other thing i would say that i've found is a little bit of a negative about that lucy and i hope you don't mind me saying is right. when you get really when you get really tuned in you can read people's traumas so fast and I, that's that's been happening like a lot to me like oh, I, I see what that is straight away and trying to help them all if you put a mirror in front of you <laughs> No, I mean, I was in a hotel room and uh, there was a, a person there bursting into tears because their husband was, or boyfriend, was ringing the reception saying, uh, you know, where are you, where are you? But there are hundreds of examples every day that you'll meet people and you can identify the trauma. And as you get a good eye for it, they seem to be the small petty ones like, you know, um, I don't know, I never had a puppy, for example. I love dogs and I'm traumatized by dogs. But identifying people's traumas, I think, it's also very handy, like you say, for the mirror to identify your own. It certainly is, because anything you can see in others is within you. <laughs> so that's 
you know, it's a really, really good point that you've raised. I just want to touch on a comment that Julia's put in the chat. So Julia put, my big, my big challenge at this time is letting go. For me, it has a lot to do with me being aware of my ego. I'm not competitive as such, just as Mahoney described himself, but my ego sure is. I love the fact that you've raised that, Julia, because a lot of people get very uncomfortable talking about ego. And I know that you followed me for a little while. And I talk about ego as if it's like cornflakes. Do you get what I mean? Like, it's not a triggering thing for me. I can easily pick up, oh, that's coming from ego. And I catch myself all the time. Oh, wow, I was going to make that decision based on ego. And actually, when you can catch your ego, you are actually stepping into a really beautiful space of reaching a level of peace. But it's just a period of time that you have to go through where you're like, oh, shit. Um, and, and the way that I catch it all the time is I ask myself, is this ego or is this my truth? And it's very important that if you just ask that simple question of yourself, very quickly you'll go, ah, yeah, it is definitely my, my ego um, attempting to hold me back. Now, a lot of people, when I talk about ego, think that I'm talking about being egotistical. I'm not. Ego is fear. It's anger. It's hurt. It's any of these lower vibration emotions. And the reason I call it ego is because we've all got stories, even the people that think they've got their shit together. I've got lots of stories. Everybody has lots of stories, right? It's about recognizing that it is a story that has kept you safe throughout your life. If you can go, wow, yes, I always go back to this person because it's more comfortable for me than moving forwards. Or if I behave like this because my dad hurt me, or I do this because of, if you can actually recognize those traumas within yourself, you can catch your ego because your ego wants you to be safe always. Without any question, it always wants you to be um, safe. All right. So it will convince you that making that decision, even though it's going to put you straight back in that same loop, it's keeping you more safe because when you know that you're going to get rejected for a certain um, thing, if you behave a certain way, well, you're right. You know, you've been proven right. So that's what the ego is designed to do. It's designed to keep you safe. So all we need to do is normalize the fact that we've all got one and all of our egos are little buggers. You know, it's like the naughty little child in the family, which was me, you know, being a little bit of a pain in the butt, pushing all the buttons and things like that. And it's just about figuring out a way where you can go, ah, that is this part of me. Now, as much as I talk about the ego being something um, external, it's also very much within you. Like we need to befriend the ego. It's not that we need to fight it or a lot of people say um, ego death. We've got to kill the ego. I don't believe that. I believe we need to learn how to work with it. I got very successful on the trading floor by ego. David got very successful in the real estate business with ego. He was confident. He went out. He could, you know, speak about anything. And that's the way that he became very successful. Probably the same in the movie industry. I don't, I don't know too much about that. So, you know, that's how it happens. So is that a bad thing? No. If it stops you from stepping forwards and it keeps you in the same loops, of course it is. It's, it's stopping you. It's uh, stunting your growth. So we need to be um, recognizing the ego and the way that it works. However, it's very much about stepping in and leaning in to a space whereby we can go, right, what, what is my ego trying to do here? How, what is it trying to show me? You look like you wanted to say something, David. Uh, I was just thinking, no, it was that. Uh, I was just adjusting my seat. It can be your best friend and your worst, your worst enemy because it can get you in a situation very easily, the ego. But it can guide you in the right direction as well. And what you're saying is very, very helpful there, Lucy, to understand the power it has and who's the master and who's the slave yeah. is, the, is, the, uh, is the hint. And it's a, it's a good way that you've just put that, actually, because I always, I always say, which wolf are you feeding? Are you feeding the wolf that is determined and is going to step forwards? Or are you going to feed the wolf that holds you back and says, don't do that, because last time you did that, you broke your little toe. Don't do that, because last time you got hurt. And this is what's very important. There are a lot of people out there, and relationships are going to be huge this month, by the way, in the energy, that you're going to be cutting ties with people who aren't um, stepping up to the mark. You're going to be really big being challenged by people and you need to put clear boundaries in place this month it's like it's really really coming through in such an intense way so let's say for example you're somebody like me who's been single for quite a long time you're back out on the dating scene and you meet somebody really really nice and then all of a sudden you're like oh yeah and you start to pick holes in them 
And there's nothing wrong with them, but you start to pick holes in them because the last time you found somebody that you could actually have a relationship, you created lots of issues about them. So, of course, the issue started to surface. Now, if you're doing that, you're imprinting in the quantum field that you want a relationship, you want love and you want the highest vibration. But then behind closed doors, you're sabotaging that. The sabotaging thoughts will always win without question. If you believe that somebody is, you know, if you start questioning, oh, well, this person isn't this and this person isn't that, trust me, you are absolutely going to have that highlighted to you in such a big way. Okay? And this is a Go on. So, would you say that it's a, a good expression to just let go of the reins and see where it takes you? Yeah, rather than yeah for sure. Yeah, I mean, if there's red flags, like, for example, if somebody, you know, if I was dating somebody and he called me up and told me, uh, something that I was not okay with, like the, the night before he'd been with somebody else, like that's stupidity to keep going forwards with it, right? And it's a bit of an extreme example, but that's, you know, you've got to act on that, whatever your values are. Now, I'm very clear on my values and and anybody that I go on a date with is very, very clear as to as to where I am because I make sure that I'm, I, I do all that before I even go on a date with somebody, you know, because for me personally, it's just uh, when I go out with somebody, I want to have fun. I want to get to know them. I want it to be chilled and fun and laid back and all the rest of it so you guys need to figure out your standards and and then go and let it let it go let any expectation go go with an open mind go with an open heart and you know just know that if you're still holding on to that hurt of your dad leaving or your mum abandoning you or someone not being good enough trust me you're going to bring that into the next relationship yeah so you seem to be focusing on relationships is that because the energies weigh into that like you're yeah. saying this this month yeah it's a relationship month you think yeah yeah definitely so there's a massive um there's a massive um uh twin flame energy around the 10th of the month 10th 11th of, of the month there's a massive amount of twin flame energy coming in um things are going to be being ignited between the twin flames which is very very interesting so that's a massive um massive uh portal of love you know coming in on the 10th of the 10th but also when i was channeling the energy it is very very much um relationship based uh, and I guess I guess it's personal circumstances, right? If you're out dating and you're seeing people, then it, it's easy to resonate with that. So, you know, for me personally, I've been challenged a lot in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, like an ex of mine wanted to come and see me. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no harm done. And then I was like, shit, what are you doing, Lucy? What are you doing? Like, that's going backwards. So, you know, and I had to have that conversation with him and he was pissed with me, like totally pissed with me. But I have to do what's right for me because I'm not going backwards, I'm going forwards. You know, and I and and that's that was an easy way that my ego would have gone. Oh yeah, but it's a, you know you're just a mate or whatever. And it's in its ego, and my ego would rather me stay stuck in a loop over here than what if I go and date somebody new and fall in love with them, and what if my heart gets broken? You know, and and that's the way that the ego works. It's it's, it's extremely extremely interesting, which is why sometimes you've got to catch yourself and say, I know what you're doing, you cheeky little monkey. But I'm going to work with you on that. I'm going to take that energy that you want and then I'm going to go forwards and I'm going to meet the person that I want to be with and have the most beautiful relationship or whatever, the career or whatever it is. You know, it's it's a beautiful, it's beautiful where we are right now. We're in healing mode. We're in progression mode. We're stepping forwards. If you're stepping backwards, you're missing the memo. Yeah. Lucy, I, I was very lucky many years ago, I think, when I... You are very lucky that you've cut off. <laughs> yeah, a phone call coming in. Um, it was around 2006, maybe 2008. And I yeah. learned to let go of the reins because all of the countries I was in were so unstable. And the job I was doing, the type of the aviation stuff was just nuts. We didn't know where we were going the next day. So instead of trying to control the, the currents that you're in, I learned to let go of the reins and just see where it takes me. And it, it took a long time really to accept that, that you're not always in control. There is a bigger plan, but I had a lot more fun with it when I was letting go of it and saying, well, what can I do? You know, I've just got to flow with it. That's yeah. um, it's a, a lesson to let go of fear and to also to let go, try to control every last little situation in life. Just believing that divine has a better, a better plan than you can ever even imagine and trying to just let go of it and see where it takes you. It's an amazing feeling. I love that about my life. Yeah, it's it's very, very interesting 
that we all think that we're in charge and we're not. None of us are. Absolutely none of us are. There is somebody up there or to the sides or whatever within us that is moving us around and placing us in front of the right people um, and the wrong people to learn the lessons and remember all of the, the everything that we need to be able to step forward. Now, it's down to you, essentially. You can either get faced with the same situation again and go backwards and go back in that loop and stay in that loop. And a lot of people don't recognize it. Oh, it's just a bit of fun. Oh, it's just a bit of a laugh. Oh, it's this, it's that. I had fun. No, it's a loop. You've got to recognize it. You know, and it's taking this ownership of, yeah. and this is why really Absolutely. being competitive with yourself is the only thing that we need to recognize. If you are going and, and staying in a loop because it's more comfortable than actually breaking out of that loop and stepping forwards, that's your own shit. You're holding yourself back. You are stopping your own journey. We need to be going, aha, here we go. I'm being tested again by the universe. I want to heal. I want to step forward. Aha. This is why my ex has come in or whatever. Do you get what I mean? And it's a great example because bless my ex's heart. I hope he doesn't watch this. And if he does, mwah, I'm sorry. <laughs> bless his heart. <laughs> but you know, that, that is what it is. And that was literally last week that that happened. So it's very, very fresh for me. Um, and I'm excited about it because I caught it. I was, I was okay to see him. And then I was like, oh shit, what am I doing? Like, literally, what am I doing? This is a test from the universe. You want love. You want the relationship. You want to be happy. And here you are going back to an ex. Not that anything would have happened between us because we're not like that now. But it's not the point. I'm basically giving the frequency that I want to be, you know, going backwards rather than forwards. So I had to catch myself. So, you know, people out there go, oh, Lucy, I wish, you know, I wish I had your gifts and I wish you this and I wish that. And guys, I get tested all the bloody time too, you know. None of us, none of us are getting away with any of this. We are all stepping through our healing journey right now. We're all recognizing um, and remembering and bringing it back online. And some of us are holding ourselves back and other people are going, I'm stepping forwards no matter what, you know? And, and the time that that person collides with me is gonna be the divine time that whoever, wherever, wherever they are, um, want that to take place. And that's, that's when it comes down to trust. They've You've got to trust yourself. Trust your instinct. Uh, yeah, I just hit a tunnel. Trusting your instinct is another good one. You've got to rely on. Um, who said? Was it you said last week that somebody said that they don't have a little voice? Was that you that said yeah. that to me? Yeah, it was. I, it was the. It freaked me out so much. So let me just explain that before you carry on your point. So. Um, a few years ago now, I remember I was doing all my Facebook lives at the time because it totally freaked me out. Basically, I thought everybody had that little voice in their head that says, you can't do that. Go on, do it. Go on. It's worth it. Go on. You know, that that little voice. And, and actually, a couple of people said to me that they literally didn't have that voice. And I was mortified absolutely mortified because for me it's just such a normal thing like I chat constantly and there are people out there that don't have that little voice you've got the voice though right me absolutely yeah. I know who it is as well and you know there's there's been several occasions and actually three of them were I nearly got killed when I didn't listen to it but they've, it's calmed down a bit now because uh, for example silly to mistakes you'd make as a younger person you know, all that seems like a good idea at the time. And, and then you realize as you get older, you say, no, nah, that's a bad idea. You know, I'm not going that. Like you, you leaving a restaurant. Come on, we'll just have one more drink. No, I'm going home. As you get older, your instinct and you learn from lessons before kicks in. And that little voice reminds you. It doesn't always remind me of the story of what happened, but it will remind me, say, nah, let's go home. Just like that. It'll say, it'll say lighter things now. Um, something else about the ego as well lucy is that it's very hard to talk someone down once they, once they get that ego attack what advice would you give people to that you know when you're trying Ooh. to talk to your partner and they've just lost it they've gone right into that whole ego the they're full of fear it's difficult to talk someone down when they're when they're at that level with the ego taking over that much isn't it Okay, so now I'm going to, I bloody good question. I love that question. Let us know in the chat if you love that question, because I bloody love that question. So thank you, because nobody's ever asked me that question before. Well, we're My... talking about relationships, and I think that's the biggest block, the communication when the ego takes over, you know? Yeah, yeah so, so relationships are um, obviously very triggering because your heart is involved. 
Now, for me personally, and this is just my perspective, ladies and gents, it doesn't mean that I'm correct, but this is just my perspective. Why would I try and talk someone down when they're in their ego? Why would I not just sit back and allow them to just be in their ego until they realize it? They might never realize it. But if I'm going to try and talk them down, what, what does that mean I'm doing? It's coming from my ego. Yeah, it gets into an argument situation then. Yeah, so for me personally, I'll just sit back and sometimes I have to bite my bloody tongue, you know, because I can see their traumas coming up and I want to tell them that it's their traumas. But I, I, go, I go a little bit the other way and I know that I've upset a lot of people with this. I kick back and I just sit and I watch and I observe and I allow their ego to really rise. And what, what will happen is more often than not, they'll get angry um, and then I'll sit there and say, when they're calm and once they, you know, once they've come back, I will, I will literally just be like, how does that feel? <laughs> how does that feel? Because as soon as you can get them to realize, well, at that moment, I saw red and, I, oh, right. So red is their ego color. And, and when you can connect people to the way that their ego looks and feels and the place that it hits their body, you know, you're, you're taking massive leaps forwards. And this is what self-love mastery does. It really brings you into the space in your body where your ego is actually being created. So I will never go, I'm, actually, that's a lie. There is a time that I would go to bat with somebody and that I wouldn't be proud of myself for doing it, but it's very, very rare that it happens with me. I will sit back and I will, you know, just let them go. And it will take a lot of effort from me because I'm a feisty little bugger underneath this calm exterior. <laughs> she's got a punch. Trust me. Honestly, just ask my ex. <laughs> if he watches this, he'll be like, she's a pain in the fucking ass. Because <laughs> I, when I dated him, I was. I was a nightmare. He often says to me, why couldn't you have been like this when we were together? You know, so that's that's my personal approach. And I get it all the time. I work with people and they're, you know, they're ranting and raving about something and I just sit back and I let it go. And, and then I ask them the question, how does that feel to you? Well, it feels bloody horrible. Like, why are you not answering? Why are you not helping me? Why are you not telling me where this is coming from? Or why are you not doing as I want you to do? And, and, I'm, and then I just say, like, like, let's look at that. You know, what is, it, what is it that's driving this? And it's always trauma. Every single time it's trauma. Well, the last time I was ignored, it was my mum that ignored me and left me on the doorstep or it was my ex-partner. And, and it's just their trauma coming up to the surface. So we don't need to compete with each other. We're here to love each other. We're here to evolve with each other. We're here to go on a journey. Just because I see some trauma in somebody doesn't mean that I'm better than them. It just means I'm observing something. And notoriously, it's been in me. So when I see anger coming up within people, I'm like, thank you so much for showing me what I used to be like. So I'm not going to react with that. I'm going to hold space for you and I'm going to love on you. But this is why it's very important that if you're single, you pick somebody who has the same level of emotional intelligence and openness and availability as you. If you're going with somebody that's not emotionally available, you are wasting your fucking time and you will get lots of clashing. If you are yeah. somebody, sorry, go on. You need to have an application form because you know what? People will tell you that they have that emotional intelligence and they are emotionally available. But most of the times I've seen, there's only one way to find out and that's spend time with them. So I wish it was as easy as that, Lucy, that you could meet somebody um, who was on the same wavelength. Maybe you should start your own dating company. You're not the first person <laughs> to tell me that. I've had about a thousand Don't people dating. saying, <laughs> yeah, do Lucy, it. set it up. But the thing is, like, all I can say to people, and you know, I'm a perfect example of this. Everybody, everybody that I meet is like, how the hell are you single? How the hell are you single? What? And it's because I've got the standards, you know, and very quickly, you have to have the intelligence and the um, availability to be able to recognize if somebody else is emotionally available or not. And it, and it is challenging right now, because you can easily just do this on a phone and decide if someone's like, um, aesthetically pleasing for you. That doesn't work for me. I need somebody to literally get into my soul and invoke my soul, which makes it even more challenging. Then put the extra conditions on top of the old jibber jabber and, you know, your belief systems and all the rest of it. Like it, the pool of people right now is like smaller than my little finger here. 
you know so it's it's not easy but fuck we didn't come down here for it to be easy we came down here to figure this out and to remind our little people that because remember all of your little people are watching you like literally they're watching your every move if you're out sleeping around every other weekend that you don't have it they might not see it but they will feel it Oh, if yeah. you are out there with lots of different people, I promise you, I promise you they will pick up on it energetically. They are your DNA. So you need to clean up your act. There's a lot of people out there that are projecting that they're, they're stuff when they're not. I love that question, Martin. So Martin's put in the chat, great first date question. How aware of you are your traumas and what are you doing to work on them? I said exactly that on Saturday. <laughs> And it got responded with absolute perfection. I was really impressed because it's a deep fucking question, right? On a first day, it's a deep question, but I asked it. I had to go there. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about any of those. I don't do any of that dating scene at all. I'm way too busy, unfortunately. So I have no comebacks on do. that. Um, Lucy, you mentioned little people. I think that's a great first question. I think it's a... Yeah, I do. Little people, I do. children. Yes. Do you feel that given the right guidance and growth and the right amount of clearance, it would be possible to bring up children inside a relationship where they weren't suffering as much trauma as would be a sort of normal? Right. Good question. I love questions about the children. You know, this is my passion. So anybody can ask me questions about children anytime. In fact, maybe I'll do a live one day and do a Q&A for the children. Um, I do have a good video coming out tomorrow, guys, just quickly called um, Help for Mums with High Vibrational Children. It's coming out at 6 p.m. UK time tomorrow on my oh. YouTube channel. Mahoney, you should watch that. I know you're not a woman, yeah. but you should definitely watch that. It will it will it will help you a lot. No, well, you, you've met my niece. You know what? how she is so that would be helpful for me yeah yeah i'd like to see her again at some point because she's she needs help um anyway let's answer that question so can um children live in a uh situation whereby the traumas aren't necessarily impacting them as much is that what you're trying to say well no i'm saying if both parents were aware of what their actions are for example right now if you met somebody you had kids and with your amount of emotional intelligence that you have do you feel that the children would not go through as much traumas um, as normal kids do? You know, like listen to the parents argue and one of them leaves, yeah. one doesn't come back, tears. Good question. You know, the stuff. So any partner that I meet, um, and maybe this is something that the ladies and even, even the men need to hear. So anybody that I meet, I ask people what they're doing to work on themselves. Like constantly, that is my question. If somebody is not working on themselves, it's a red flag to me. I don't care how bloody spiritual you are, how awake you are and whatever. If you're not working on yourself, you're not going to be the person for me because like there's too many people out there that believe they've got their shit together and they're just a walking emotional trauma wreck. Like literally it's a train wreck. So I, I'm i very, very, um, you know, I'm going off to meditate for another week in December. And the reason I have to do that is for my for my preservation and for my growth and for me to recognize. So I fast a couple of times a year. I go meditating for a week, like completely off grid for a week, um, at least a couple of times a year. The reason I do that is to work on myself. So I need to be with somebody who gets that first and foremost. And the only person that's going to get that is somebody that's working on themselves. So let's say, for example, I meet a beautiful man who's got a child. There is no way that a new relationship would impact a child if both of the actual parents, like the biological parents, are doing the work on themselves. Now, it's very easy to blame the other person and say, you need to work on yourself. You fucked up. You did this. You did that. Take the ownership for yourself. Accept that that person is mirroring back to you. Even if they're a complete ass and you don't think that you're a complete ass, take the ownership on yourself. Right. What do I need to do? How do I need to clean up my act? How do I need to love more? How do I need to be more present? How do I need to communicate better? And then if you can, you know, because any any man that I meet, I was going to go really into detail on something then, but I'm going to stop myself. Any man that or woman that you meet, if they've got another life, because chances are at the ages that we are, everybody's got another life, right? You have to accept that life for what it is. It's not your job to fix it. It's your job to hold space for it. Now, I seem to be really lucky in the sense that 
if if I go on a date with somebody who's got children, they've actually got a really great relationship with their ex, which is great. Like it's great. Do you get what I mean? It makes it very, very easy. But that said, any child is going to have um, an instability. So you, with a new person coming in, because it's a new set of energies, it's a new dynamic, they probably won't get away with certain things that they used to get away with and, and little bits and pieces like that. It's not your job to be their parent. It's not your job to be the fixer. And I know particularly women want to go in and fix. It's our job to just hold space and allow that to evolve, knowing that it is going to be the lessons and things that we need to be able to help us evolve further. Now, good, very good answer. What about if children don't have trauma? Do you feel that they're going to be ill-prepared for the big wide world if they don't suffer a little bit of trauma growing up and understand what infidelity means and understand what that feels like? So the video tomorrow goes into this in detail, but I'm going to give, I'm going to give a high level. Every single person on the planet right now bar probably a handful of people, their children came through as a karmic tie. The right. only reason children will come through with no trauma is if both parents are completely conscious and they've done their own work and they bring it into a conscious unit. Very, very rare. Very, very, very rare. Exactly. So every single, every single child that comes through is, has, is coming through to teach the parents predominantly and show the parents their healing. So uh -huh. let's say, for example, now this pisses people off every time I say it, but I'm going to go there anyway. Let's say a child comes through with leukemia. So from birth, it comes through with something really serious like that. This is the parents healing. This is a note to the parents. Now, more often than not, it's to try and pull the parents closer together. So when a child is sick, it's normally the, the parents need to come together. But what normally happens because of stress and all the rest of it, they pull apart. They kind of like miss that memo. So any child and the, the, I kind of use 14 to 16 as a good age. Any child under the age of 14 to 16, I would suggest if they've got anything going on with them, whether it's colds all the time, uh, you know, they break bones all the time, or they've got something, God bless their little soul, something more serious, please know it is to do with the parents. Okay, about 14, 16, it kind of transitions into their stuff. So it's their karmic ties, it's their karmic lessons that they need to go through at that point. Okay, so I believe we need to hold a container for our children so that they can get their growth. How do we do that? Working on yourself. Your children will mirror you. Everything you do, they will mirror you. If you are um, somebody who cheats, your child will be promiscuous. If you are somebody that is promiscuous, chances are your children will do that. Not necessarily to your uh, awareness, but you know, um, it's, I'm a good example of that, right? My dad cheated on my mum, and then I went on to be quite promiscuous through a few of my years. You know, admittedly, I'm totally different to that now, but, you know, I own the fact that that was me. I own the fact that I was mirroring that back to my dad. I, I own it. He doesn't necessarily know about that behaviour, but it's a mirror. This is what we do. So it's just one little example that we've got. And, and if we can take ownership and if we can look at ourselves rather than thinking it's our partner or competing with the neighbor or wanting this or wanting that, bring it back to self and say, right, what do I need to do to clean my act up? Because going out on the piss every weekend and sleeping around and stuff, you might think it's fun, but actually it's setting an imprint into um, your, your quantum field that that is what you want and that is what you do. And then obviously your children will follow suit of that. So we need to be very, very aware of this. As human beings, we don't realize how bloody powerful we are and we need to be remembering it because everything that we're living through right now, the geopolitical stuff and everything, it's our own bloody doing. It's our own doing. And until we stop allowing this to take place and giving it the energy to take place, it's going to keep going. That's a really good little um, angle on that. I mean, all you've got to do is look at smoking. You know, mostly if the parents smoke, the kids are smoke. When I go back to the UK, Lucy, you know, I, I see things that maybe some people wouldn't that, that when they live there. But I see a whole family of o obese parents and then the kids are obese. I mean, because they're just showing them exactly who they are. But I know they're slightly different because they're, they're cooking for the kids and they're eating the food. But, you know, it, it is evident that our children have the same habit that the parents show them. 
It's like a yeah. career. It's how they are in in pop people. Um, it, a really good example. How many times have you a badly behaved dog? Mahoney, it's not the dog's fault. Mahoney, your reception's really bad. You sound like you're in a fishbowl right now. Well, give me give me two seconds. I'm at home now, so I'm going to be back up. I'm going to go black for about two minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. No worries. So yeah, it's it's you know it's Mahoney's asked some really good questions to get today, guys. I really I really do think that he's asked some good questions. Um, I'll have to probe him as to why he's asking these questions later. <laughs> But he's asked some really, really good questions. I feel that we are in a position right now whereby, you know, we are we are literally in the Hall of Mirrors. I've been talking about this for many, many months. If you guys have been following me, you know I've been talking about this for many, many months. It's time that we do recognise that everything that we are experiencing, and I know that this triggers people more than anything else that I ever say, when more than I talk about ego, we are living everything that we've been putting out. And people say to me, I never wanted the government to do this. I never wanted the government to do that. No, but we've put up with it. And that is the whole point of what I'm saying here. We are literally living everything that we are putting out into the quantum field. And if you are somebody who's, you know, you get every other weekend off because your children are, are to your ex-partner or whatever. So that weekend you go out on the beers and you get drunk and you feel like crap come Monday. Don't be surprised when your children start mirroring excuse me, mirroring that behavior back to you at some point in the future. You know, it's very, very, very important that we that we recognize that this is what's happening. We are um, we are imprinting the quantum field and that's the, the quantum field is how um, everything else gets picked up. Yeah, you're right, Denise. People have accepted it. Like I don't drink very, very rarely do I drink. I've got absolutely no desire to drink alcohol. I mean, I, I've, I've only been drinking water for the last few days. You know, I'm, I'm on juices today and I just feel so, so um, vitalized and alive and, you know, just so connected to this journey because I love myself enough to you know i'm not going to go and sleep with somebody on a first day i'm not going to like like i said earlier way too much information by the way but i'm just feeling a bit like that today about my ex-partner you know i easily could have seen him last week i easily could have you know whatever and but i chose not to i chose to take a different um approach because i wasn't prepared to go down that route and live in that loop mahoney's back now hello <sighs> quickest run from the garage up here <laughs> In my life, but it's worth it, Lucy. <laughs> well, we've only got a few minutes, then you can just come down gently. I'm um, all right. No, it, they, these Mondays are really important to um, me. I really enjoy them. So in my opinion, the show must go on, Lucy, always. Yes. Well, it's I, I, what I was saying to people when you were off is that you've asked some really, really good questions today, really good questions, and I think questions that are going to really help people. So maybe next week what we should do is do a Q&A with people whereby yeah. they can maybe watch the video that's going out on my YouTube channel tomorrow. And obviously we've spoken a lot about children today. And I love, I love um, speaking about the children. I love it. In fact, maybe we should do it the week after because then I can speak a little bit more about soul school as well and around the children and how that's going to work for the kids because that's all I care about. I, that sounds awful. It's not all I care about. I care about getting the parents in alignment for the children. Um, but I just believe, I just believe that we've got such a gift right now whereby people are getting it, people are seeing it. And we do need to take responsibility of the, the shit show that we've created. You know, we've got to on take the, responsibility. You mean on the planet, the geopolitical stuff? With, with everything, you know, yeah. we've got to take responsibility for the shit show of, you know, our children being little buggers sometimes. You know, my, my sister will often say stuff to me and you know, and, and that, you know, people will talk to me about their children and we have to take responsibility that we've created this. You know, we've created the <laughs> geopolitical side. We have, we've got to take ownership of no, it. No, I, I wasn't laughing about that. I was laughing about that first date question. <laughs> I can imagine how many people no, just amazing. sort of, it's a great question that, you know, you're going to freak people out. They're just going to go, what? I'm leaving now. No, 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 not if they, if they're out on a date with me, they know what they're coming to. Trust me. If they've actually made it to meet me in person, trust me, they know exactly what they're getting. They know how weird I am. <laughs> there I, is I have just a, no hiding it. Yeah. I have a child story from my own um, experience of being a father. I'd like to share. My son is now 25. And when he was born, I was working on board a ship. 
So I was an engineer in quite a large boat and I had to leave for the first six months. So I was born and about a week later, broke my heart and I sailed off. And when I came back, he was six months old, sitting up. Um, actually, I think it was about four months. I didn't miss too much. But he developed a large mark on his face, which is called a hemangioma, a strawberry hemangioma. It's basically a lot of blood vessels all in one place, all squeezed out. And it looks like a large tumor on his cheek. So by the time he was one, it was very large. It was the size of a large strawberry, and it was pink in color. And the experience we had with that, what you were talking about, drawing the parents back together, it was our karmic journey, Lucy. I think you're so spot on because what it made me feel is I had a baby that looked like one of those babies they put on the front of baby packaging products, pampers and cereals. He was just so perfect, blonde, blue eyed olive skin when he got tanned. He was absolutely beautiful As but yes one year old <laughs> <laughs> but he had this large growth on his face and i had to get used to people staring at it i had to get used to kids looking at it and some people were really rude about it yeah i can imagine like one german guy came up the airport and just immediately without even asking or saying hello put his finger towards to try and poke it and i, I think i actually must have at least bruised his finger because I bent it right back and he ended up on his knees. I was furious. Yeah, yeah, I would be too. Back in the day when I'm not, that wasn't the same Mahoney then. Now, the only person that really made me feel humble, Lucy, and this is a great story for anybody that's growing up in the West where we've been educated to treat people from different countries with disrespect, okay? I was standing at the airport and a Moroccan man came up to me and he was very nervous of me. I was giving him that look. What's he looking at? He says, please, sir, I really, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me for asking. I am a father. I have children. I, I would really, if it's not too much aggro, what is this? I would like to know. He was so humble about having to ask what it is. And I explained what it is. And he was, you know, thank God, inshallah, everything was okay. It was absolutely no medical problem with it. It faded away by itself. One in a hundred kids have them. Um, but it really taught me about humility yeah. and um the next thing that went on to that story was because i knew so much about them i saw young couples with children with the same mark and i always still do like oh that's a strawberry hemangioma let me tell you it goes away don't worry people think of some some sort of um trauma some like a, not a tumor and Beautiful. to repass that education on but the humblest man whoever did it of all the places we went was a Moroccan man, and he probably had about five euros in his pocket. Beautiful. That's a beautiful Great. story. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Can I just answer Sarah's question um, in the chat? So she's put, so if the parent is bad or criminal, it's possible for it to run through the family. Of course it's possible, but th this is where we reframe things, Sarah. I'm sorry if it's Sarah, but it's Sarah or Sarah. Um, so I would reframe something. In my book, nobody is a bad parent. There, there is a reason that person has ended up in prison. There is a reason that person has gone down the route of crime. It's, it's, I don't necessarily look at that as a bad person or a bad parent. What I would be doing is making sure that there is a balance between, you know, and you know, I mean, I don't know your situation, but as a, as a mother, as a female, what I would be doing is looking to get as much balance between myself and the father um, or the other parent as possible so that the child is completely balanced. You show it love, you remind it, and then remember, you could mirror that back to your partner, your ex-partner, whatever your situation is, and then they can start to feel the love. Remember, your child knew when it embodied in this physical vessel that its parent was going to go to prison or was going to be bad or was going to be a criminal. You know, remember, we all know that. And, and your child has the tools to be able to step through and embody whatever it chooses. So for me, I'd just shine even brighter. I wouldn't make it codependent on me because there's a tendency to do that with our little people. And so what I would be doing is I would be allowing, you know, if they're allowed to do Zoom calls, like I like I'd say, I don't know the situation. I'd like to know more details, really. But we don't, we've only got one minute. So, um, you know, if, if you can do Zoom calls with them, let them have Zoom calls, like let them have that interaction. It's very, very important. We have to let go of our perception of good and bad. We have to accept that this person is the father for some reason. 
whether you think they're good, bad or ugly, it doesn't matter. As a human be being, we must embody what we got sent here to do. And that is for us to hold space for our little people to go through their journey. We've got to do a Q&A, don't you think? Absolutely, Lucy. I mean, the, the subject... I'm on fire. I want some more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I'm pleased you are because... I was drifting a little bit. I was trying, obviously trying to drive and, and still stay on topic. I, I managed I'm to pull fire. those great questions, but I managed to pull it off. The show must go on. And I apologize, guys, for you having to join me on a drive back from uh, the airport. But anyway, these, are, these, uh, these recordings are important because I'm as much as you like me to sit in with you, Lucy, I always learn so much from these as well as, well as the audience. And I think swapping some of the stories coming from a different background and, you know, yeah. I... I fought for everything that I've uh, believed in. And it's taken many, many years of my life to get to where I am. So people ask me, how did you become who you are? I said, well, it's because of all of the messed up, screwed up stories that happened because I was so stubborn and Irish and I wouldn't give up. And I'd say, no, when you can't do that, I would just find a way around it and do it. Yeah. And it happened during COVID, all the, all the stories and traveling I got done during that. So never give up on your life journey is, is something I truly believe in. And as much as I'm not in tune with, you know, I, I, they do channel with me. I mean, all of these words that come out, these are not pre-chosen. These are all coming from my soul. Um, I'm very privileged to be on this journey. So, again, encouraging people to not give up. If you have a bad day or a bad week, don't give up. You're not, gonna, you're not here watching us at this time of night. You could be doing something else. You could be watching TV. Exactly. Exactly. So they're in the right house. Can I just, Sarah's just put, you can't pick your parents, but you actually do. Like, yeah. like there, there's a memo that I don't think you're quite grasping, babe. Um, the, the, the soul, before it embodies, it saw, say, Sarah and David. Let's just say Sarah and David, just because David's here, it's easy, right? So Sarah and David are a couple. If I was the soul of your child, I'd be like, oh, David's going to go to prison and Sarah's going to lose her, her mind and she's going to get angry and there's going to be all this judgment. Right, I'm going, I'm going. That's that's the process that takes place. And that soul is like, I know I need this for my healing. And that then becomes a karmic journey between the three of you, which is why I say most children come through as a karmic journey to the parents. It's very rare. And it's, you know, I I believe I have most of my stuff together. I believe I've dealt with most of my traumas. I believe I'm very conscious. And when I fall pregnant, I am going to be bringing through a conscious child. However, I have to be very careful with the person that's obviously going to be having the child or like giving me the child, because if he doesn't have his shit together and he hasn't worked on it on himself, what do you think I'm going to be bringing through? A karmic baby. Now, I said this to David many months ago now when I was in Spain. I said to him, I know when I have a child, the child is going to come through to just be a game changer. And I'm not saying that children that come through on a karmic journey can't be, but I know when it comes through, which is why it's been held off for such a long time, when it comes through, both me and the man are going to have our stuff sorted so much so that this baby comes in, literally will just go in and just create massive shifts, massive, massive, massive shifts. And like I say, I'm not saying that that means it's better than any karmic child. Actually, the karmic ch children have much more work to do. Well, it's very I'm very that we acknowledge that. I'm really, actually, exceptionally grateful for my parents and their traumas and screwed up things because I tell you what, it taught me so many great lessons, and I know now that I needed these these talents. And, and lessons to get to where I am to achieve my life mission. I couldn't have done it without it. Like growing but, up. But life's changing now. We're changing into a different world, really from middle yeah. to late next year. We're going into a very different world now. So the children don't need to come through with all that trauma. That's why it's important we clean our act up. And it's important that you added that at the end of the sentence. I think that's very appropriate because if you are a young parent at the moment and you're thinking, oh, God, I hope my kids don't have to go through what I've been through. No, my journey was to make me the warrior I am to, to continue going on like this. So I'm very grateful for it, Lucy. Yeah. So exactly. amazing. I've got, I've got another question, babe. in it. Raj is not allowed to appear on this show. <laughs> When's he, when did he get banned? Raj is banned. Since soul school, Raj is banned. <laughs> what about the video you sent me yesterday? Are you going to put it out? You didn't answer me yeah, on the text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you told me to put some music behind it. Monday is like my busiest day, so I haven't had time to do it. I'll put some music behind it. 
and then I'll get it out because it's fucking hilarious. It was great. I think it's hilarious. The funny thing is, is I look at it from a very, very, very different perspective to you. You were like, oh, you're going to come across as a nag. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you're in our Divine Activation Adventures group, there is a five or six minute video coming out of Mahoney. <laughs> it's Mahoney's best bits that I made. I've just got some music <laughs> behind it because he wasn't happy. Yeah. Um, but, but you haven't seen the way it ends either, which is hilarious because I wasn't allowed to send it to you. For some weird reason, WhatsApp cut it off at a certain point. Oh, you haven't sent me all of it. No, so there's a bit my... at the end. There's a there's a bit at the end when you're going to wet yourself. You're send me that yourself. then. Send me that. I could do with I, a laugh. I, I can't. Which you can it? just clip it off. You can just clip it off. Oh, you put it on WhatsApp and then just move the yellow line and you can send it. Okay, I cool. like the, the car horn bit because I just turned into a frightened old lady. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, guys, if you're not into Vine Activation Adventures on Telegram, go and get in it. This video is going to make you piss your pantyhose on a uh -huh. Monday evening, I promise you. Although I am on calls from 7 till 10, so I'll quickly do it now and then get it out to you guys. Um, but, David, it's been good to see you, my love. Thank you yes. all for attending. Thank you for your great questions. Um, I'm pleased that I've been able to help some of you in the chat box today. I really want to talk more about the children. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love well, it. Set, set something up, Lucy. It was a great, great one tonight. The questions were really deep. Yes, and, you well know, done. And just to add one little thing, I always absorb them more. And when I leave these recordings, I always feel the butterflies. I'm like, ooh, more messages coming through. And I hope the audience get the same buzz out of it that I do. And I hope it's helping them get further on their activational journey. Because that's what we're all here for, to help each other. Oh, yeah. And next Thank week, you, don't forget, we've got Soul School launch on uh, Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. UK time. So um, hopefully some of you will be there. Mwah! We love you. Take care, Adios. guys. Adios. everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>